Hey there, my name's Scott Williams. Um, I'm a part of Team 28 and uh, for Eng 2800 this semester. Um, today I'm going to show you a bit of our project, which did pretty well and um, ended up winning an award at the Innovation Showcase this year. So, if you come and have a look here, our um, project was essentially a uh, weather station. If you can see here, we've got our um, wind speed sensor here. So if I spin this around a bit, we'll get a wind reading here. We've got a temperature sensor here, so this is a thermistor, a temperature, temperature varying resistor. And down here we've got a photoresistor, which is a light varying resistor. So over here we've got our MCU board with our microcontroller, our Atmega 324 underneath. And we've got our power regulator, our FTDI chip for USB comms, our 7 seg displays to display some data on here, our standby mode button. A, um, some jumpers here for some readings, our programmer header, and a minus five inverter chip here. And on the sensor board, we've got, as I mentioned, the sensors, some, potent some potentiometers here for um, adjustments and calibrations, and our GPS location button here. And lastly, we've got our GPS advanced feature here, which is just slots on this header here. It's just a proprietary GPS module, which has a serial transmission of latitude, longitude, and timestamp and you just cycle through your locations here and you can take readings at certain points and then view them on a Google map later in software. So with our weather station plugged in with a USB cable, um, we can light up the software here and we can start receiving sensor readings. So if I click this button here, we we'll start seeing sensor readings flow in. So if you zoom in on here and have a look at the wind speed column, you can have a look as I blow on the wind speed. Wait a sec, need to go down. Yep. Right. Yeah. If I blow on the wind speed, you can see the readings increase. Secondly, if you look at the temperature, if I put my finger on the thermistor to heat it up a little bit, you can see it go from 27 slowly, slowly up to 28, and then maybe even 29 if we're lucky. Or in, on the other end, I could take the thermistor out to represent a high resistance or a low temperature, and this will be minus 10. Then finally, we've got our light resistor here so you can see it's fluctuating a bit because of my shadow if I just cover it completely with my finger you can see it go down to nearly zero not quite just because there's a bit of light creeping in the cracks and that's in lux so lux temperature Celsius and meters per second here cool so we've got graph readings as well of this data so this is just a this is a digital display so we've got an analog display of the data here too so here we've got wind speed temperature you can see temperature is pretty constant Lights varying because my elbow is hovering over the uh, the lux meter. But if I blow on the wind speed like before, you can see some peaks here. And then um, lastly, we've got a really nice handy uh, strip chart here, which shows all three on the same axes. So the lux is in uh, a relative percentage, and the others are still in their normal meters per second and uh, wind, uh, temperature Celsius. So that's me hovering my hand over. The green light reading, me blowing on the yellow wind speed reading, and me taking out the thermistor and making it really cool on the temperature sensor. So, um, so as I mentioned before, we've got this proprietary GPS module attached as an advanced feature. So it's just lodged onto a header here, just for testing and um, working out how it works. But we can easily solder this onto the board if we wanted to. Um, so now I'm going to go out in the field and take a few readings. So at three spots, we'll have a high wind reading, a low temperature reading, and a low light reading zones. Then I'll come back here, and I should be able to show you on Google Maps those locations and the data reported there, and the time, and the latitude and longitude. So we're outside. Um, we're about to take our first reading. Um, so we're going to start by pushing this button once I take the reading, and that'll start recording the average for five seconds. So our first reading, we'll do a high wind area. Cool. So as you can see, um, our temperature reading we're getting outside is about, ooh, let's see, about 23, 24 degrees. So to symbolise a very low temperature, I'm going to have a really high resistance, like which is essentially an open circuit. So if I pull this thermistor out, it's going to represent really low temperature or minus 10, which is our max limit. So if I press record data here, so this would essentially be a really cold area. Right, so for our last reading, um, we're going to use the light reader. So it uses a photoresistor, as you can see here, and essentially this increases with resistance as you decrease the amount of 
light it gives. So right now, facing the sun right now, this would have perhaps 200 ohms of resistance. So if I cover this with my finger to represent darkness, this might have a resistance of say 20 mega ohms now. So if I do this and click my GPS location button, this is going to essentially represent a really dark location with really poor light levels on our GPS data. Cool, so we're back now. I've hooked in the weather station back in. So if we go into here, if I just click this display GPS data option, a little applet's going to open, a little Google Maps applet. It's going to show the three locations here. And this is at EQ, so this is where we film them. So this is the high wind location. So I'll have a look, just click on it, show the data readings. So we've got wind 14 meters per second, temperature normal, and insulation, which is another word for light level normal. Location two, this is our low temperature one. So wind speed none, temperature minus 10 degrees, and light level normal. And then a third location and final, we'll have normal wind speed none, normal temperature about 23 degrees, and insulation at 17. So as you can see, 4,000 is a normal sunless sort of level so me covering it 17 a little bit of the light getting in the cracks that's pretty pretty good reading so thanks for checking out our video um, I just thanks to my team this semester I, I my name is Scott Williams I was in charge of the hardware uh, India Fallon was in charge of the firmware so linearizing all the readings and also programming the seven segment displays and the USB comms and Marco who's filming was in charge of the software so for a team of three we've done pretty well this semester. Thanks.